Hello everyone and welcome back to Crypto Sipto. I am your cryptocurrency enthusiast and certified sommelier host, Jeremy Cox, and today we're gonna to do something a little bit fun. It's Friday, August 16th, I think. Today's the 16th. I'm not working today, so I, days just kinda, they're flying by, aren't they? I can't believe it's August 16th already. Today I wanted to talk about uh, wallets, revisit wallets, because I, I talked about them uh, probably in my second or third video and uh today i'm gonna i've got some examples some really strong like in-person examples of wallets but a crypto sipto episode is not complete without some wine and so i figured a good wine to pair with wallets with storing your um cryptocurrency is port it's an after dinner drink and it's uh it's a lot of the styles are made to be aged and you hold on to them, you store them for a long time. And uh, these are a little bit different though. These were given to me from a guest at, at my restaurant. Thank you so much guest, I really super appreciate it. Uh, it's one of the other fun things of when you get into wine, people just, you know, it, it, wine's all about sharing. And so I was gifted, shared these wines. They're different uh, than your typical port. port is supposed to come from Portugal, right? Isn't that interesting? Port, Portugal, Scotch, Scotland. Um, but the thing about it is that people can, as long as you're making it in the style, which this is going to be a very traditional style. This is the actually very interesting too. This uh, wine is actually from a winery in Colorado called Greystone. And they're the only port house in Colorado. So he gave me two, and I'm gonna open up both of them and, and uh, have a little taste of them before we get into talking about the wallets. I have the Port 6 and the Port 7. So uh, this was done in 2006. This is like a, a vintage, but um, it's still pretty young as far as like a vintage would go. And the Port 7 over there, because usually you have different styles of port. There's Ruby Port, which is young and uh, pretty inexpensive. And then you get into the Reserve Ports, and then it gets into the Tawny Ports. And the Tawny Ports are aged for, I pulled up a port thing on Wikipedia because I'm not completely uh, versed in ports. I drink a good amount. I drink more if it wasn't for the fact that I'll get to, into in a second. But uh, your Tawny Ports are aged for... Uh, Da, 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 da. typically at least three years. And then after that, then you're gonna get into the vintage ports, which are like the 10 year, the 20 year. You've seen these, I'm sure, in restaurants, uh, 10, 20, 30, and 40. And then if a, if a port is really, really good, they'll actually like bottle just that vintage and call it uh, the, the actual year. If it's a 10, 20, or 30 year port, that means that the, the, the wines that they use to make that have to be at least, if not older, than that, so 10 year can have up to, you know, like a 20 year port in there, uh, but all of the wine that they make with that port has to be at least 10 years old. Uh, ports are always fortified, and um, these ones are clocking in at 19%, uh, which also makes them more traditionally uh, served as a dessert wine. You're not gonna like load up with a, with a, with a glass of port uh, before dinner or even during dinner, um, 19%. There are special glasses for port wines. Usually they're they're smaller. I have some smaller port glasses. Uh, but you'll see when, when you go into restaurants, you'll be like, why did I get gypped? I ordered a port and I got like a glass like this. It's because uh, they're, they're more made for sipping. You know, they're more made to just enjoy. And there was something else I was going to say about uh, getting into the ports in just a second. The reason I don't order ports in restaurants. Um, ports are not ordered very often unless you go into a super high-end uh, restaurant that's got a, a really kick, like kick, uh, really amazing. I was going to say something else, but I'm trying to keep this as uh, no cussing, you know. But I don't know if but kick kick butt a kick butt wine program. Uh, ports usually get opened and then they sit and collect dust for like two months before the next person orders it. So I don't order ports in restaurants, but I will tell you my favorite port experience that I had learning about the different styles. The, ta the rubies, the tawnies, the uh, vintage, the 10, the 20, and the 30 year. Uh, I got to take apart a bar one time from a, in a restaurant that was closing, and my job was to basically pack up all the liquor. And the owner of the restaurant was like, hey, you know what? I can't really afford to pay you because we're closing, but uh, have at it. I want you to be, I want you to taste anything you want. And so 
it was like I'd always been eyeing the ports because at that point I hadn't really tasted too much and I I'd, I'd never ordered a 30 year you know port Dallas 30 or um uh you see Coburn I think has it has a 30 year there's some really fun um information on these houses too in a documentary called A Year in Port uh you've got Fonseca you've got um Taylor Floodgate you have um just a lot of different I'm trying to think of other other names that you would see um in on restaurant wine lists but explore away they're fun like after dinner when you're gonna get into something I, I highly recommend uh, ordering a port and seeing what you think if you like if you're a, if you're a, like a straight out like an alcohol fan you're gonna enjoy port it's uh they're they're pretty high octane and um you wow this smells really really good all right so Let's just get into it. Uh, these are, again, like I said, 19%. I'm going to pour a little bit of the seven. Oh, and you can already see, like, the color. It kind of comes out of the bottle looking like, this one looks like, like, kind of like Coca-Cola. Uh, and the six. So, it's actually like this, six and seven. So, six and seven. You can't, you can, oh, I can see a diff definite six has gotten a little bit darker. The seven is a little bit lighter. This is something that's uh, interesting about red wines. Red wines get lighter as they age and white wines get darker as they age. So if you're trying to, if you're studying for a wine exam or anything like that, and you're trying to guess the age of the wine, uh, the color will give you some indicators and younger wines in red are darker, older wines are lighter. And this is showing that. So the number, the, the, the port 06, Greystone Vineyards uh, out of Grand Junction, Colorado is a very um, classically styled port nose. It's, it's got some of those like raisin qualities to it. It's, I can definitely smell the oak. The oak is, is off of this. Hi, like it, it's definitely, I don't want to stick my nose in here too much because it's a uh, the alcohol is definitely blowing off, but that's got that's got some really amazing aromas. Now for the seven, this one's got a little bit more of like red fruits. I'm not smelling as much of the of the uh, the, the raisin quality to it. I'm getting a little bit more of like like black fruits. Still, still some good wood, um, like molasses. There's some, ugh, that's, okay, and I'm going to go backwards, and I'm actually going to taste the seven first, and then I'm going to taste the six, so here's a little taste. Cheers, everybody. Happy Friday. Thank you for joining me for Crypto Sipto. Wow. Now I want some chocolate, or some nuts, or some cheeses, Stilton blue cheese, blue cheese, any cheese plates, um, chocolates, uh, a chocolate cake like if you have a restaurant that serves like a really rich like dark chocolate cake go for the port um but that's really really good uh the guy that gave this to me was curious because he had a friend who he gifted another one of these bottles to and the guy came back to him and said that's the best port that i've ever tasted ever in my life and he's like jeremy i want you to taste these and i want you to tell me what you think and again I've tasted my share of ports, but I'm not like a port, I don't go drinking port like all the time for that reason I just told you about. But um, I've tasted really good port and that's really good port. So now we're gonna move on to the the six. Wait, yeah, the six. They're different wines, different ports. This one's a little, this one's a little more grippy, um, a little more, like rich and, and actually there's there's a higher there's a bigger alcohol play going on with this one um and i'm getting a lot more of the raisin uh like more like more like prune like this tastes like a like a prune um in a good way and it's it just enveloping my mouth there's it's it's really like warm like as it's going down, I can feel it kind of going down, and it's uh, this is going to be a very interesting episode. I I am not going to drink too much of this stuff because uh, it's Friday, and when the wife comes home, we're most likely going to be going out and doing something tonight. And if I drink too much of this, I'm just going to be zonkered and conked out. So, 
Oh man, but uh, so there's port. Let's see if there's anything else I want to tell you about port. They can use a, like a hundred different varieties of grapes to make port, but there's like five classic uh, grapes that are used. One of the uh, fa factoids before I tell you about the grapes is that they've always been known, known for fortified, wine, fortified wines, but uh, there's been a push recently to where they actually want to make these uh, grapes I'm about to tell you in like in just regular still wines, like not fortified. And those grapes are Tinto Ruiz, uh, Toriga Francesca, Toriga Nacional, and Tinta Barroca and Tinta Cal. The Tintas are actually Tempranillo grapes. So um, that's one of the things that's that's also kind of interesting at like Tempranillo, uh, it's all three of those. It's I kind of did them in out of order, but the Tinto Barroca, uh, Tinto Cal, and Tinto Ruiz are all temper, Tempranillo grapes. And then you have the Toriga, almost like Tortuga, but not, uh, Toriga Francesca and Toriga Nacional. Um, I dig these. I, um, again, if, if, drink your drink your dessert. Don't even have to order dessert. You could just order one of these and, and enjoy it, and you're getting all the sugar that you need. So there's a lot of sugar in these. And you can also see really heavy legs. I don't know if it's if it's translating in the on the camera, but uh nineteen percent's gonna definitely make some some legs happen, right? So there they are. All right, so moving on. Wallets. Here's my dirty fiat wallet that you've seen before. Here's my wallet that we use to store fiat currencies, right? So government issued currency that's in my fiat wallet. But once you get into cryptocurrency, everything changes. It's different. You can't put any cryptocurrency into your wallet. Well, you can. You can put one. You can put this paper wallet into your wallet, but I wouldn't recommend it because um, uh, this has a thing called a private key on it along with your public keys. I got this out of a ATM machine at this place called Crypto Space in San Pedro. I went there yesterday and I had intended on actually buying some Bitcoin, but then, and, and, buy, and you know, getting the wallet, but uh, these ATM machines will just spit out a wallet for you and then you can start using it. And I pretty much like killed this wallet because uh, the moment that you expose a private key to the public, uh, you don't want to use that wallet because that's how pe that's how somebody would be able to get in, how you would be able to uh, uh, transfer money out. But if anybody has that private key, they have access to your wallet. What they wouldn't have, and so this one was done kind of interestingly. I, I was given a crash course, a little quick uh, tutorial on why there's there's these two little things right here. The reason is because you want to make sure that nobody ever sees your private key. So you would fold it once along the line and then fold it a second time so that you can't, there's no way to see in it. You got to be really careful when you're, when you're playing in the world of cryptocurrencies, especially if you're going to get serious about it and start storing a lot of money uh, into your value, into your wallets. Uh, you don't want anybody to see that. But your public address, you can, give, you can give it to the world. I've seen people with tattoos. I've seen shirts. I've seen a pizza made out of a, out of a, a QR code. But this is basically a QR code that is also your public wallet address. And that's the beauty of these wallets and cell phones. If, if anything has a camera on it, uh, it basically can access uh, wallets, like uh, QR codes for your wallets. So then the next thing you have, and I'm filming this with my camera, so I can't show you uh, another version of wallets, but that's the paper wallet, right? Then you have these things called hot wallets. And a hot wallet, you can also get them I'll pull, let me pull one up really quick. Exodus Wallet. So you've got, you, you download it, and then you basically can have your crypto stored on your computer, but it's in a hot wallet. So you, you basically have to have access to the internet in order to get it and to transfer money in and out. So a lot of times you'll have your wallet on your phone so that when you're walking around, you can be like, oh, I want to spend some Bitcoin. Oh, I want to buy some Bitcoin. I want to transfer some Bitcoin to my friends. I can do it right on a wallet, uh, right on your phone. If you don't have the key, if you don't have the, you know, something like a QR code or the wallet address, the the crypto basically doesn't belong to, your, to you. And the reason that I'm telling you that is because if you have your cryptocurrency on an exchange, on Coinbase, on Binance, on... Um, any exchanges out there on Cash App, I use Cash App on my phone now, uh, that, those, that cryptocurrency really isn't yours until it's transferred into a wallet, either a paper wallet 
a hot wallet like Exodus here, which if, if you had it, then you would basically have this. It would show you what you're, what you have. Let's see if, uh, let's see if I can show it. So yeah, it would basically look something like that. And uh, you could buy all of these different assets. That's another one too, when you get into wallets, uh, a Bitcoin wallet can only accept Bitcoin. You can't transfer Ethereum or Litecoin or any other cryptocurrency to any other uh, wallet except for that corresponding wallet. So if you have Litecoin, you gotta get a Litecoin wallet. And so it's always important to, before you're gonna get into it and you've decided which cryptocurrencies you're gonna, going to buy, again, not financial advice, don't buy anything, don't drink anything, Just uh, we're just having some fun. Um, you wanna make sure that you have the wallet that corresponds to that because not every wallet uh, accepts every cryptocurrency, right? So then we're gonna get into cold storage wallets. And I have my Nano Ledger S that I got for Christmas. Thank you so much. Uh, I'll show you this one really quick. Uh, this is basically you hook it up to a computer with a, with a USB uh, port and then you plug it in and then it's got all kinds of security. It's asking you for a pin number to get into it. And then in order to access uh, my, uh, the website that I use here, which is like the Nano, the Ledger Live, I've got to put in a password and uh, then I can pull up my accounts and I can transfer money in. I can, tra I can withdraw money and put it uh, wherever I'd like. I actually take that back. I can transfer that to another wallet or to something to offload it into my bank account, right? So if I want to put it into back into my bank and I want to cash out, which I don't do, I'm a hold where I'm, I need one, I need $30 million to buy my winery. Um, so yeah, I don't, I don't, I, to this date, I haven't sold any crypto. I've only bought and that's it. So the last one is going to be kind of fun. I'm going to open this treasure. I was gifted this. I actually, uh, somebody at this meetup that I went to last week that was uh, from the Exodus family. And thank you so much, Sebastian, for, for giving me this treasure wallet. And I told him, I'm like, I'm going to put this on a video and I'm going to talk all about wallets. And so here I am doing it. Um, but you're going to see some fun things here. And I don't know if I'm going to have to do any editing on this because, uh, like I said, if, if I expose any like private information, uh, and one of you guys is a hacker out there that's going to try to hack into this wallet sometime in the future, uh, I'm going to be really sad. So I've got that part of it. We And always another thing, you want to make sure that your wallet is is uh, like never has never been opened uh, and, and has some security features that hopefully this one's going to have in a second. Oh, so yeah, I've got this here that we've got. We've got a, like a, um, a, what's it called? P a sticker, a sticker that says, this has never been open. It's basically guaranteeing that, that I've been there when you, that, that no one has been onto this wallet. Nobody's like got the wallet address or anything else on the ledger. It, it comes with this interesting thing that says, Hey, how come there's no security features? Why isn't there like a, one of these, um, like security stickers or anything on it? And supposedly they have a technology that's like, uh, like unhackable. Uh, nothing's really unhackable, but um, they say that they aren't going to be hacked uh, and, and be able to get your like your wallet address. So here's another one. We've got uh, stickers here for the accessories. And then there's something here that is, I'm not sure exactly what that is yet, but um, I'm not going to get too deep into this because it's... Um, it's, it, it is a little involved to set up a wallet and it would be a long video. Maybe in another video, I'll show you how to like access them. If you've been paying attention, you wanna go back to the other videos that I've done. I, I didn't, I should have written them down like what they were trading at when I was there, but uh, I know Ethereum got all the way up to like, we were talking like $300, I think. It's at 185 now. XRP is at 26 cents. Bitcoin Cash, $313. Litecoin, 75.31. Binance Coin is trading at twenty-seven eighty, and Tether, you know Tether's at, right? Obviously, it's a dollar. It's pegged to the U.S. dollar. Uh, all right. So, oh, and then EOS. We did EOS too. That's three sixty-one, three dollars and sixty-one cents a coin. That's about it for today. Thank you so much for joining me on this wonderful adventure of crypto sipto down the rabbit hole and down the hatch. Cheers.